if you have two laptops and you want to connect these two laptops with the USB-C port to two screens and the keyboard and the mouse and switch between these two laptops, you can use a KVM switch. But what if also you want to connect these two laptops to a physical network connection and other high-speed devices? This is where the CDOC i20 from AV Access comes into use. So it is at the same time a docking station and the KVM switch. And it has also a very neat feature that I'm gonna be telling you about a little bit later in this video. So in my video, I'll be showing you the ports of this docking station and I'm gonna show you also how to connect it very quickly and we'll be testing it. And my laptops are one Windows laptop and one MacBook laptop. So this is a MacBook Air M1. And I put a MacBook in this video on purpose because this docking station slash KVM uses the MST transport protocol. And this protocol has a limitation when it comes to the Mac computers. And I'm gonna show you what is this limitation also in this video. Let's open the box. So this is everything you get in the box. You have the power brick, and then you have two USB-C to USB-C, very good quality cables. You have some documentation, and this is the KVM slash docking station. This is the front of the docking station. These two ports here are USB 2.0, 480 megabits per second maximum speed, and they are ideal for a keyboard and a mouse connection. And this here is a headset input. So it is 3.5 millimeter. It supports a microphone input and headphones also or speakers. This is an SD card input. And this is here USB-C 5 gigabits per second speed port. And you switch between the laptops by pressing this button here. Now this is the back of the docking station. You have here two USB-C inputs and this is where you connect your laptops and they have a speed of 20 gigabits per second and they have also a charging power of 60 watts each. These here are two USB-A ports also that have a maximum speed of 480 megabits per second. This port here is control port. So here you can connect a device so that you can control this KVM slash docking station remotely. And this device is not provided in the package. If you wanna use it at home, it is not required. And these here are USB 3.2 ports with five gigabit speed each. And these two ports are HDMI 2.0 with a maximum resolution of 4K 60 Hz. And this is the input for the power adapter. And this is the LAN port that has one gigabits per second speed. And I told you at the beginning of this video that I'm gonna tell you about a neat feature about this KVM slash docking station. And it is that it will always provide network access regardless of the laptop that you are selecting with this KVM switch. And this is a very nice feature in my opinion. To connect it, you need to connect first your computers to the USB-C ports here. So this is the USB-C cable of my Mac computer. I'm gonna connect it here. And this is the one for my Windows PC. And then afterwards, connect everything and connect the power at the end. And now I'm gonna connect the power and two things about the power that I don't like. First is that this docking station slash KVM doesn't have a power on off button and then that the power plug here it is a proprietary plug and here it is turned on i want to show you now a useful tip on your windows laptop so that when you close the lid you can always dock it and it will keep on running so on your laptop open control panel by typing control in the search box and then choosing control panel and then go to power options and here click on choose what closing the lid does and then under when I close the lid, make sure that do nothing is selected both for the battery and for the plugged in profiles. Just before continuing with the video and as a full disclaimer, I wanted to let you know that AV Access reached out to me and sent me this free sample to test it. But the opinions you are seeing in this video so far and you're gonna see are only mine. No one interfered in the video and I wasn't compensated to make it. That being said, let me now show you the limitation that I talked about about the Mac OS computers so i'm gonna switch to it now this is my macbook air m1 as i said and you notice that it is displaying the same thing so this is the limitation the limitation is that it cannot display two different screens it has to duplicate the screens and this is not a limitation of the kvm docking station but a limitation of the mac computer now if you want two screens on your mac computer you can open your mac laptop and now you have two screens. The first test I'll be doing is the network connectivity test. 
and the result should be that both computers should be able to connect to the internet even if I switch from one to the other. So these here are two web browsers and we're going to test the internet speed with these two web browsers. I'm going to launch it first on the Mac and then I'm going to launch it on the Windows PC. And what I noticed with this test is that they are sharing the bandwidth of the one gigabits here of the network of the KVM. I have 120 megabits per second internet speed, so they are not getting the maximum speed. But nevertheless, both of them are working fine. What I want to test now is the video and the audio on my Mac computer. So this is a video of mine. I'm going to launch it. And the sound is going out from the Mac computer. So if it is the case, this is what you need to do. Click here and then go to sound. Click on the arrow here and then choose AV access dock. And now the sound will go out of the speakers that are attached to the iDock. So let's try it once again. Almost the same specifications. So this is a success for the Mac. Let me switch now to my Windows PC. Hi everyone. These two headphones have almost the same specifications. And the sound is going out of these speakers that are connected to the iDoc. So the video and audio test is a success also. The next test I'll be doing is to test the speed of this iDoc. So I'll be copying a very large file that is 6.24 gigabytes from USB key that is also very fast that is connected to the iDoc to this external hard drive that is also very fast. So the speed that we should be getting is around 300, 350 megabytes per second. And the purpose of this test is to see if the iDoc will be overwhelmed and saturated because we are using both USB uh, ports that are on this iDoc. So let's start the test. And we're getting around 300, 315, which is really very good. And the file was copied in no time. After using this iDoc C20 from AV Access for a while now, I can tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. First, what I like about it is that it is very convenient. So it is grouping two functions in one device. So it is a KVM and a docking station at the same time. The second thing is that it is really very well built. And the third thing is that it comes with the required cables. So the USB-C cables that should connect the laptops are provided. And even though it is a little bit expensive, the price is justified because of the functions that it offers. That is KVM and docking switch and all these ports that are 12 ports in total on this KVM. Now, what I don't like about it is that it doesn't have an on-off power button. And when you operate it, it becomes very hot. So at night, for instance, if you want to turn it off, you need to unplug it. And this is not very convenient. The second thing that I don't like about it, and maybe this is only related to my unit, is that the keyboard uh, sometimes didn't work. So what I did is that I simply unplugged and replugged the keyboard and it worked. And it happened only two times in the last months. If you want to check out this iDoc C20 from AV Access, I'm going to leave an affiliate link in the description below. If you make a purchase using my link, I will gain a small percentage and this is at no cost to you and this will support my channel. I hope that you liked my video and you found it useful. In case you did, please share it, subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. I'm Eloy from Knowledge Sharing Tech. I want to thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.